Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Chuck Farnham. Chuck Farnham, how do we? Dis- uh, I always described you as our stunt man. Yeah, that's kind of how I explain it occasionally when people ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that uh, you and you used to go out and do weird kind of stuff for us, weird, right? Weird things without reason or anything else. Right. It seems right. So, uh, it, it, give an example of just a few of the wonderful things you used to do on our program. This is, this is, by the way, intellectual entertainment that we were involving ourselves in. People were driving to work, and, uh, well, you know, we started with the cover myself with mustard and went down to Pacific Stock Exchange. No, but you, you, were, came, you came to me as something else. No, 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 I came to you as... A guy who was selling human remains on tour with Lollapalooza. Oh, I see. Okay. That's how that works. Yeah. And then producer, I came in. Well, we did an interview over the phone. Mm-hmm. And then they said, hey, on Monday, why don't you uh, come into the station? And I yeah. said, I think I've shot my load here. I got nothing to say. And she goes, no, 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 no. We, we, you know, we, we want to try this. So I'm like, okay. So I come in and you and I bullshit about human remains and jewelry yeah because of that time legal yeah. and everything was good bye hey nice meeting you you know blah 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 a friend of mine rick brettsteiner huge fan of yours mm-hmm. years before he had invited me to come down and watch the show and i fell asleep and almost got thrown out you were like you can't sleep so anyways years later here i am was i that boring what? was i that boring I don't know. It was early in the morning, and I didn't understand <laughs> much. And I mean, so so anyway, so as that moved on, that was like on a Monday. Yeah. On Wednesday, I get this phone call from the producer again going, can you come in on Thursday? And I go, come in for what? Let's see, we did the jewelry thing, and we did the jewelry thing. She goes, no, I just want you to sit there. We think there's something between you and Alex. <laughs> and we want to explore it. And I'm like, I don't know what that could be. I have no idea. Is that my producer but, who said that? Huh? Yeah, it was, it was uh, Stephanie. Stephanie, yeah. And I came in, and that was it. It was like, I think after that, it was about a week later, I said, they said, hey, will you come in again? And I, I'm like, well, I can. I've got to go on vacation. I'm going on vacation. And they said, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to go to the... Um, O.J. Simpson trial. <laughs> and, and, um, this is what this guy, by the way, this is what this guy does for kicks. Yeah, I got nothing better. He goes to, to the O.J. trial. Did you go to the O.J.? The Did you go to the O.J. So trial? So I, I go to the O.J. trial, and unbeknownst to me, or no, 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 it was, it was Nixon's funeral. It was Nixon's funeral before the O.J. trial. Oh, yeah. I was down to Nixon's funeral where I didn't have credentials, and uh, we just hung out. And so, while I'm down there, and they said, well, you you guys said, will you call us while you're at Nixon's funeral? And I said, sure. Well, within about two seconds, I I bullshitted my way into... Now, this is is before before cell phones are popular, right? Yeah, yeah, we had that big boxy thing. Yeah. And, And so, while that was going on, unbeknownst to me, uh, the station manager, Manali, was, had the head of uh, Intercom. He was picking him up at the airport. Mm-hmm. And they were listening to the show, and, and the guy goes, how long has, uh, how long have you had a reporter like this on staff? And that, that he goes, <laughs> he's not on staff, he's on vacation. It's just this guy that, you know, when he goes, 
when when we're through, you're hiring that guy. And he goes, and I don't care. He goes, because somebody's going to hire that guy to do this stupid stuff. It and couldn't have been couldn't it. have been the head of the company, however, because Whoever that was, guy was awfully team. that guy was awfully square. I don't think he'd even get what we were doing. You know, it might have been well, his son who is now the head of uh, of that company. David. All I knew was when I came back from vacation, I had a job that was hanging out with you in the morning. I, I didn't. They said, what you what, 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 can I ask you what they paid you? It was like fifty or hundred dollars a day. Really? And you know, it's radio, so you're getting all these perks and promotions and stuff. And yeah, but it, it was like per day, I wasn't that, any of per that. day that you were doing something, right? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fifty bucks a day. So it was, and I was there every day. So if, well, but sometimes like the day. Well, yeah. in, in the case of the day we had Jackie Chan there. I was there to provide security for Jackie, even though he, he traveled with a ninja. But Did he travel you know, with I, a ninja? I, I, oh, yeah. He had a guy in slippers and black <laughs> everything. And it was like, wow, this guy's cool. Well, he was our hero. He still lives, I think. Oh, yeah. Chance. Yeah. So, you know, I got paid and I got, and it was regular and everything was good. And I was having, we were having fun occasionally. Like I think uh, Chevy's or Chili's gave me a just an obscene amount of money to be a human burrito in their restaurant one afternoon. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah. It, it was like the, like five hundred thousand bucks, something like that. Well, and they didn't pay you five hundred thousand bucks. Well, five hundred or a thousand. Five hundred or a thousand. for me to be a burrito, not five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You froze there a little bit. So it was kind of funny because years later, my dad was sick, and we, we were talking about the stuff with you, mm -hmm. and I was asking him how he felt because he's a very conservative guy, and and, he, and he'd heard the video. I sent him the audio and stuff of the burrito thing, and he goes, how much do they pay you to be a burrito? And I, and I told him, and he goes, when you were a kid, I didn't make that much money in a month. And I'm like, really? And he goes, he goes yeah. And I go, so you to, you to become a human burrito? For five hundred bucks, he goes, dude. I'd undercut you and done it for two fifty. <laughs> this, this was a guy who was now. Let's very, explain the human burrito to people. Yeah, this was a guy who was very, very conservative. I could not see this guy's burrito. No, they put me on a table and then they they just start scooping, um, you know, Mexican condiments on me and beans and rice and cheese and yeah, you know, meat. Of, Toys, mm -hmm. and then uh, people get in line and eat off me. Yeah, they would literally take like corn chips. And... They would re they would eat off me, and none of us thought it would work. Nobody thought, hey, this. You know, is religions religions have been created on less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? and there there they were. Our take of the away. flesh of of the flesh of Chuck. <laughs> yeah, we were like we we're like okay, so. Now we know this stupid thing works, so if we ever fall out of something, you know, we always, the old good standby is, you know, Be the human start burrito. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then you had to keep thinking up stuff. Right, right. It wasn't, you know, it was like, okay, so it was National Mustard Day, and that's how the food thing really started was National Mustard Day. Condiments we, were very I, big I, with you. Yeah, I was trying to get everybody, anybody in the station to become... I thought I was going to be producing these bits, and I couldn't get anybody to become a, a, you know, cover themselves in mustard. So I thought, okay, I guess it's me. And I didn't bother asking anybody after that. I just started covering myself with food. Yeah, yeah, that that was upset. And it still works. That guy covered in food, always funny. Yeah. What was your favorite though? Did you have a favorite? Um, of everything we did. We went down in front of a 24-hour Nautilus, not far from the station, and I covered myself in powdered sugar and taunted the guys who were all on the treadmills facing the street. And they were getting really unhappy. I mean, I'm sweating, there's powdered sugar. I, I all seem over. to remember you doing that for my TV show. Uh, we might have done it then too. Yeah, where you went around to I mean, people who were on treadmills and working out and offering oh, yeah, them donuts. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, we did. 
Yeah. And the guy said from 24 Nautilus, he said, this is one of the best promotions for this place I've ever had. A fat guy eating donuts and people trying to exercise. <laughs> and, and they actually offered me the shower to clean off afterwards because <laughs> normally we were at some uh, car wash hosing me down. Yeah, we, we they used to take you to car washes to hose yeah, you down. Which, by the way, is not the brightest thing to do either. The best part of that, that 24-hour Nautilus thing, and I think I, I've said it here before probably, is that this big Cadillac pulls up, the lady gets out, she's she's huge, she's a huge woman, and she gets out and she's crying, and the, and the uh, intern who's with me is like, what do I do? And I go, I don't know, you're supposed to be security, I'm just a fat guy covered in sugar. And he goes, okay, I'll talk to her. And he goes, comes back and he goes, she wants to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. She comes over, she's crying, and she goes, I need to thank you. And I go, for what? You want a donut? I mean, <laughs> what, what did I do for you? You know, like, I mean, you may as well too. And she goes, no, every morning, I listen to you guys in the morning, and you're obviously not a small guy, and you obviously don't care what people think about you not being a small guy. And you didn't have any bo- you I didn't could. have any body dysmorphia. Right. You know, you right, did not you were not you had no absolutely no guilt about your weight. I still don't. I don't care. Yeah, you've There's let yourself you've you continue about. to let yourself go to, to crap. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm eating better now, but I still weigh like three twenty five. So anyway, this woman goes, every morning when I walk I park my car and I walk to work. I know people are making fun of me mm-hmm. from behind, mm-hmm. you know, as I walk by. Yeah. And she goes, and it used to bother me, and I had to go to doctors and, you know, psychiatrists. And she goes, whatever. So I started listening to you guys on the radio. She goes, I don't care what they think anymore, Chuck. I don't care what, what's going It doesn't matter to me. And she goes, it really mattered to me for a very, very long time. I went through a lot of therapy. And she goes, because of you, I, I don't do that anymore. And I, I go, would you like a hug? Or no, and she, goes, she goes, can you hug me? And I go, I'm covered in powdered sugar and jelly. And she goes, I don't care. And she hugs me and, 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 and she's off in her car. And the intern who was there, he looks over at me and goes, seriously, you're helping people. This is well, helping that, that, people. You know, that, that's interesting. You know, because when we did these things, we weren't thinking about any subtext to it of helping anybody by doing it, okay? The only way we were helping people is maybe people were listening and they were laughing, okay? That was our therapy, all right? But to think that that there was was some woman... we thought the therapy was. When we think that... When we find that there was some woman who was affected by this, who it made her feel better... Yeah. That almost makes everything that went before worth it you know right i and whenever anybody asks i tell that story because it still has a big effect on me yeah yeah that happened i mean she uh that's a great story i never knew that story you never told me that yeah i never i don't know where she went i don't know where she is now but Yeah. yeah you know we had a profound effect on her and she had a heck of a one on me yeah Absolutely! Wow, that's a that's a great story. Yeah. Meanwhile, we went on to do other stupid stuff. You know. Yeah, we you know pretty much anything we could possibly imagine. We were down there at the um, uh, on Mondays. We'd be down at the drunk tank, waiting for people to get out and interviewing them <laughs> on our famous segment. <laughs> Why are you here? Yeah. And they would tell us. Yeah. You would get it out of them. Let's say. You know, I beat somebody up last night, or I was drunk, or you know, et cetera, et cetera. And those I were was good. those were all good. I mean, I think the uh, Terrence Hallinan liked those. The only thing that I did um, to, in all of this is sit there in the studio and yeah. you know, and be the straight guy. You know, actually, we, we spent we spent a ton of time together outside the studio and you never knew what was coming no No i never wanted i never wanted to know yeah you You know i mean uh, i i always told my staff if you're going to do something 
surprise me. Okay, yeah. because I don't want to be in on it. Some because then I'm going to think about. We didn't know. Well, when I don't know what's happening, then I'm reacting like the audience is. You know, right? And and it's it was very important to me to not be in on any of this or any of these things. You know, I know right. the, oh, Chuck today is on the Golden Gate Bridge. I don't know. I can't remember why we sent you out to the Golden Gate Bridge. Maybe to jump because off. It was, I don't know. It was. Um, it was it was it was the Friday before um, it was the Friday before Easter mm -hmm. and I was uh, baby New Year or Jesus was three days early I think was the baby Jesus three days early yeah yeah, yeah I was Jesus three, I had a cross and boy is that bad taste and we went out there and the, the funnier part of that was and that bit worked really well and then I said hey if nobody's doing anything you know uh, Easter Sunday's coming up and uh, I obviously should should rise from the uh, from the dead on Easter Sunday and so like every while you're doing the show I'm sitting there and every few minutes I go Easter Sunday Golden Gate Bridge be there be there be there and you're like you're not going to go out on the bridge on Easter we're not even on the radio and I go People are expecting something, so we should give it to them. Well, Lisa Carr was throwing a party at her house. Lisa Carr was our tra was our traffic woman before Bubs, right? And she yeah. was overnights, I think, as well. And so, I'm going to go to this this party. Right? By, this by the way, it was a traffic woman named, and it's her real name. I know, and I didn't know. I thought her name was. Lisa Carr. Uh, 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 did she take Lisa Carr because it's Lisa Carr? Yeah, yeah. that's not her name. No. Yeah. I was like, your name's not Lisa Carr? But anyway, so I go out there with my guys, uh, um, Yedney and um, I think John Kahn, maybe one of this, uh, Sean mm -hmm. Morgell, one of the guys. They built a cross for me. And so I go out and I do my thing on the bridge and sure enough, here comes psychiatry because that's what happens when you're semi-naked on the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm wearing a diaper and carrying a cross and... And they're yelling and they're coming they over... They want to make sure you're not going to jump. Yeah. The first thing you do <laughs> on the Golden Gate Bridge is you get naked before you throw yourself off. We didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. No, it's a problem. Really? Yeah, everybody pulls their clothes up right there and then jumps. Why? They don't want to get their clothes wet? What? I mean, I <laughs> it makes no sense. I I have no idea. All I know is the psychiatrist has met me there many times because of you and me. And he comes out and goes, how you doing, Chuck? And I go, well, it's Easter Sunday. I'm kind of celebrating here, you know, and having a good time. And I'm traffic is backing up a bit, but you're coming into the Sunday. Sunday, Easter, San Francisco, there are people coming in. And I wasn't necessarily responsible. A big problem, I didn't think. But a big enough problem. Yeah, yeah. So we finish this, and I go to Clara's house for for this Easter event. She's got a bunch of people there, and I'm sitting on the. And she comes in, and I come in, and she goes, you know, maybe you should shower or something. And I shower. And I'm sitting on the couch, mm -hmm. and this guy comes storming in the door. God damn son of a bitch! God, I did blah blah blah. Some idiots out on the bridge had a cross. And it stopped traffic, and I'm late now to this your party, Lisa, because of this, and blah blah blah. blah. The guy is just freaking out. And Lisa goes, "Bridge, guy with a cross." Oh yeah, he's sitting on the couch in there. <laughs> like the guy comes in, and there I was in my uh, uh, diaper with my cross. Wow. And he was, it was you. I'm like, yeah. And he went, Why? I go, well, I was giving people what I told them I was going to give them on Friday. I think the answer to that question should be, why not? Yeah, it's like, just, I, I, I learned this a long, long time ago. Don't think too much about it. Right. Just do it. Right. So much easier to say you're sorry or I wasn't thinking about that. I made, I made some t-shirts one time for the company that sold the the human bone jewelry and I called it cannibal wear because everybody's dying to look cool and then it had this like eastern Indian guy on it 
and people would come up to me and scream that, you know, Africans aren't cannibals. I go, I know, he's Eastern Indian. Those are the cannibals. Yeah. And uh, well, they're also cannibals yeah. in the Amazon. Yeah, you can't. It's they're like not. you can't complain to people, you know, when they're yeah. The whole idea that cannibals were necessarily black was a racist uh, instinct. You know, we're we're arguing about eating people. You know, it's yeah. like no, eating people is probably bad. We can move on. It's a joke, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's a joke. Yeah. But yeah, that's life in a show. You know, you just do it and. Most of them worked, and we had stuff that was incredibly stupid. Where I can remember, I don't know, it was me and several people. We're in a meeting. You're there. We're trying to decide on guests. There's a list of guests, and they're going by you because you had to approve the guests, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes they would have me in there because they weren't sure which way you were going to go, and they knew that. Maybe I had an opinion, and maybe you'd listen to it, or maybe you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. But I would be there as this thing. So I'm sitting there, and they get to um, uh, Shaft, Isaac Hayes. Mm-hmm. For some reason, you said, no, I don't need Isaac here. And I'm like, okay, but I'm like, Isaac Hayes? Man, that might be fun. And and several other people in the room really wanted Isaac Hayes, unbeknownst to me. And I said, well, what's he going to do? What's he bringing in? And they said, unreleased shaft recordings. He's got them on dad tape, unreleased shaft recordings. And you peeked up at that point, and I went, we get unreleased shaft recordings? This will be awesome. (laughs) (laughs) So Isaac shows up. He's way early. Is it it on a version where they actually say motherfucker? Yeah, yeah, he had everything. It was awesome. Like, Isaac Hayes is here. So he's way early. He shows up like, I don't know, he's going to be on an eight. He shows up at seven. And I'm entertaining Isaac Hayes, which was, you know, a real treat. Mm-hmm. And then uh, our uh, receptionist, um, I can't think of her name, was late. Yeah. And I said, hey, Isaac, what want to answer the phone. And he's like, what? And I go, you want to be the receptionist? And he goes, sure, Chuck, I'll do it. So he's sitting in the desk there, and I go in and tell the producer, I go, Isaac is the new receptionist. And she's like, what? You talk to Isaac Hayes? And I go, he seems into it. So <laughs> he's answering the phone. He he goes to put a phone call through to you. And you're like, Andrea, that was her name, the receptionist. Mm-hmm. You go, you're not Andrea. And he goes, no, I'm Isaac. And you're like, you're on in the eight o'clock hour, aren't you? And he goes, he goes, yeah, but Andrea didn't come in, and, and so Chuck's here, and we're just hanging out. And he asked if I would answer the phone for him, so he doesn't have to. And um, I got no problem. I'm just hanging out with Chuck. So Isaac is now answering calls, like for the next hour, people are calling the station now just to talk to Isaac. You know, just to, just to see if it really was I. It was, it was perfect. And, just, and did boom, we have, I don't know. Did we did we put a microphone out there with him eventually? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah we had yeah. a whole thing going on. Yeah. It was awesome. I think, we went from Isaac's probably not going to be on the show to Isaac's on the show for a couple of hours. Yeah, it's great. Oh, it was terrific. That's terrific. I I I don't even remember that. You know. It, there's so much yeah. that went on on that show that I just don't remember. Yeah, no, yeah. there are things and, and that, it's, and it's not because I'm old. It's just you do these things every day and every day. And, and what I always did was after I did a show, I put it in my, oops, I got I to gotta do something here. Because all of a sudden, see, I freeze. See that? I'm frozen. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. It's been happening. Yeah. So I have to go to another camera, okay? So I go to another camera, and and it's frozen. Oh, it's frozen now too. It's frozen now oh, too. Oh, this is oh, this is wonderful. Okay, let me go back to my other mic uh, camera. There we go. Is that okay. freeze on We're the okay. screen too? And does that freeze on the recording as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for hmm. some reason, the camera's been freezing up lately, and I don't know why. You know, I really wish it had to do with rebooting, but I've done that, and it still freezes. So. 
who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You know, when it does, it's solvable. You know, so that's all there I care go. about. You know. Hey, listen, we run, like we've run, black run, on. Oh, we'll talk about that next time. Okay, uh, that's Chuck yeah. Farnham, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk to you again, right? Stay where you are, and we'll do another one of these. Yes, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Farnham, our former um, uh, guy who was the did the stunts on the show. Okay. I'll still cover myself with food if you need it. Okay, bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, let me see here. There we go. I pushed the button. I pushed it and that didn't go, but now it went. So it's I'm okay now. Hello, everybody. Another week of fun and games or phoning games or actually that isn't even phones anymore that we use. It's just uh, the way it is. Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? I hope uh, you had a nice uh, couple of days off. Uh, and uh, we probably should go to our, well, people are waiting, and they're just, uh, oh, wait a minute. I just said admit all. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are we doing? Admit all. There we go. Wait a minute. Waiting room. There we go. Admit all. Okay. There is, uh, let me see here. Let's see if we got them all here. Uh, we got, there we go. We got Charlie, and we got uh, Jeff. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Jeff. Hey. Jeff still can't figure it out. Well, while we're waiting for Jeff to figure it out, uh, just connect your audio, uh, Jeff. That's all you have to do. Just turn on your audio. There you go. You just did it. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. We, we should make you a list of what to do and what not to do. You know, no, really, that, uh, Marjorie always said that's the best way to do things. You make a list, you know, and what order that you're going to do these things in and so on. Works for me. Works for me, too. What does it say on your shirt tonight? It says, be greater than average. Very good. That I like that one. I would buy those shirts, except I don't know what they say. So I maybe maybe I will start buying them, and then you can just interpret them for me, so I know yeah. what they say. I, I'm undoubtedly I'll probably pick out something that says like I'm a big asshole or something like that, you know. <laughs> nice, you know. But um, um, yeah, that's I like your shirts. Your shirts are just the best. Oh, look it's who's a hobby. look who's here tonight. Look who, who who's joining us uh, mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Phil Meyer. Is this your night off of Photoshop or photo school or photo games and whatever? Uh, that's next week. Oh, that's next week. Okay. Yeah. First and third Wednesdays. First and third Wednesdays. And that's when you go and beat up on the old guys. Is that what it is? Yeah. You know, some of them are doing pretty good, although... Uh, I had a shot of a breaching whale, which took first place uh, against 14 other clubs in Northern California in my uh, level of thing. Advanced. And how old is that photo? Uh, it's not that old. I mean, a couple of years. Because you really are just putting in old stuff, aren't you? A lot of it. You know, I haven't gone out shooting. Uh, you know, I, I just don't have time. Uh, the only thing I shoot lately is uh, about three, four times a year. But don't uh, these people? Don't these people usually submit pictures they just recently took? Nah, I got people that are. Uh, uh, what, what's that uh, uh, stuff uh, that they used to take pictures of Lincoln? Uh, what do they call those? Uh, you know, tin types. Uh, what's what type? Tin types. Okay, tin type. Well, I there are people still putting out tin types because <laughs> they because they used to print them i believe on tin yeah on metal yeah. yeah yeah uh yeah uh so you know some some of these old guys are putting out stuff uh older than my model t what do you mean none, none of them are doing digital <laughs> oh no 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 they're they're all doing digital now oh, okay mm. all right no, okay uh, i mean is your camera a film camera or a digital camera no. uh it's digital it, yeah it's a uh, nikon z9 now, I see if you were a real purist, you'd shoot on film. Uh, I, I do have a film camera. 
uh, I have a Canon AE-1, but um, I haven't shot anything on it in years. How and much then, is film more expensive now because nobody uses it? It probably yes, I'm sure it is. And then uh, you know, I used to have a dark room in Sausalito, uh, off of my garage. I had a, I had a dark room set up for black and white photography. Mm. Uh, and then if I shot anything in color, I took it to a lab. There was one called Faulkner Color Labs. They were the high-end lab in San Francisco. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you'd have to go to the lab. You'd talk to the guy about, you know, how you wanted it printed. And uh, it, it's not, I like film. And, and I like black and white. Well, black and white is the best. I yeah. used to be able to do more with black and white than I ever could with color in a in a, yeah. uh, in a uh, what do you call it in a dark room. Yeah, well, dark room was a was a place where the phone wasn't ringing and it was a uh, very calming place to be. Also, as you as you develop the picture, I like to see the picture come up uh, in the developer, and then you you know you put it in the fixer and. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I used to do stuff like we, take, we have to mention to people so they because some people don't know what you're talking about. I mean, come no. on, this hasn't been done no. in years. There, there were there were three baths you used as you developed. Well, first you would develop your negative, okay, right. and then you would have the roll in, 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 in a in a canister in a canister, and then you would go over to your enlarger and you would put these negatives in the enlarger. And then right. you would expose the paper, the, paper, the paper underneath. And then when you had the paper exposed, you then put it in the developer and you would see. Right, but there's there's some skill uh, in the enlarger because oh, you yeah. would dodge no. oh, and oh, burn. Oh, yeah, yeah. But let's not get into that. I'm just uh, trying right. to explain to people the process here yeah. of how ancient people like you used to do photography. Yeah. Um, and then you would put it in the developer then you put in a thing called the stop bath. In other words, when you got it to where you liked it, okay, you could over, you could Basically overdo Basically water. It. Yeah. It was water at a certain temperature. Well, yeah, but the stop bath had some chemicals in it, if I remember uh, correctly. Yeah. I know the fixer did. The fixer did. And then, yes. then you put it in the fixer, and the fixer stopped it right. all together. It just fixed it. And then that... Then you put it up on a using paper clips up on a string and let them yeah. dry. Dry out. Okay. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you and then after you've done everything you had to do, you turn on all the lights and you can look at the pictures and see how they look. Well, black mm -hmm. and white had more flexibility of what you could actually do with it. I mean, you were talking oh, about dodging mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You could highlight spots and do things like sure, that. Sure. I, I used to take cotton balls and I would take different different temperature water. And I would rub it on the picture as it was developing to bring out certain areas. Uh, it's the kind of stuff you do digitally now, but uh, uh, it was it was a it was a fun it was a fun process. Well, dodging, I used to use my hands. Yeah. To get you well, know, and, and what you could do with it with a black and white picture is you could do more with it. Now, you can do that, and you can do a lot of that stuff now with digital, black and white or color. Because you go into Photoshop and you can do all kinds of things and change things and change the U and the color temperature and all that stuff. And you remember when you could uh, do things to push the what they called ASA back then, which is American Standards. Uh, I, I, what uh, so, whatever. Yeah. You know, you had a hundred ASA. You had two hundred, five hundred. Yeah. Well, you could you could tell somebody in a in a in a uh, dark room. Could you push this? Yeah, right. Yeah. Because because you could shoot. You know, let's say uh, you had a, a hundred ASA film. You could shoot it at two hundred ASA, speed it up, and uh, this is and, getting too complicated. I was uh, just trying to explain how pic, uh, film was developed in the old days. And but you know, the, it's coming back. Uh, you know, there there are there really? are people that that love Not film. Our lifetime. Oh yeah, oh no, no, yeah, no. no. Uh, you know, a lot of these things come back because there was a reason why they existed. You know, there are people now who um, uh, directors who still make their movies on film. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they don't shoot it digitally. Uh, uh, Christopher Nolan is a perfect example of that. He always shoots on film. Yeah, uh, and uh, Quentin Tarantino. I don't know what he did with it. it happened in Hollywood. 
but with the Hateful Eight, that was shot completely on 70 millimeter uh, film. Yeah, you you helped me with a paper once on on Tripack, Kodak Tripack. Mm -hmm. and I learned more about that from you. Tripack. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was it uh, when when you have the one film that had the three colors in it? Uh, it was already melded together because prior to that, they used to have uh, three different reels. Oh, well, of well film. no, you're talking. You're talking about no. They they had three okay. different reels of film, and that was Technicolor. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> there were other versions that, that only demanded one film, and right. that was things like Eastman <laughs> color and so on. Yeah, what did they call it? I thought they called that tri-pack. No, no. no. Nothing mm -hmm. looked as good as Technicolor. Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To this day, you can take, because here's what happened, folks. You told I, me about a movie okay, called let, Becky Sharp. Let, well, it's a, that was the first Technicolor film. Right. But uh, let me explain to people something. Mm -hmm. that when you, see, when you saw Technicolor, you didn't really see a color film. You saw a three different, they would do three different reels of film. And they all shot black and white, but one shot with one spectrum, which was cyan. Mm -hmm. Another one was magenta, and the other one was uh, what? Was uh, green. Uh, green. Yeah. And then what happened? They they would they, they would all be shot with these filters that made them uh, into these various uh, levels of the color. Yes, then the three of them were put together and developed, and that was Technicolor. And to this day, if you can find all three reels in good shape, you can make mm -hmm. a perfect Technicolor film. And Technicolor never, if you look at it, anything it never like, changed color. Some of the Eastman yeah. color, these other colors mm -hmm. that came out, would turn blue after a while, or they'd turn green. I mean, uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, that's what I, that Kodak stuff used to do when they shot Jaws. Yeah, and the yeah, blood yeah, became yeah, purple. Became purple and so on. Yeah. Today they can go in and they can redo that by, uh, uh, you know, redoing the, the, you know, the mix on the film and everything. But it, you know, it was pretty terrible. What was happening to a lot of those films? Uh, George Lucas, when he shot, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Star Wars. It was Star Wars. Uh, it was done, I think, in deluxe, if I'm not mistaken. And he wanted to protect that film always. So what he did is he took the film and cut it up into three different negatives. In other words, he separated the colors and kept mm -hmm. them that way so that it would always be rich and good. Yeah, he could always do a good master on it. Now, uh, I, I, w I just found out that IMAX, that the theaters are... Uh, that there are very few theaters that actually have the 70 millimeter IMAX. What you're seeing is uh, some sort of digital. recreation of IMAX. No, it's digital. Digital, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not the 70 millimeter film, and uh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, I thought an IMAX theater was an IMAX theater, but uh, yeah, no, it, you know, was, it was. It was no. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they're they're digital, but no. Mm -hmm. But here's what's happened mm -hmm. with Christopher Nolan. He won't let any IMAX theater show it and anything else but showing the actual film. Yeah. And that film is 11 miles long. And I can't remember how much it weighs. It weighs like 300 pounds. Okay. Wow. And it fits on a platter and they, they show it in every theater. That mm -hmm. way. So, yeah. you know, it, that's the true IMAX. But, there, but m most of the IMAX films lately were just digital. And they weren't really IMAX either. They were shot yeah. in something else, and then they were just blown up to that. I, I was told that there are only two IMAX theaters in the Bay Area, and the rest of them are all digital. Uh, well, I uh, the one that here uh, down in Columbus Circle, uh, not Columbus Circle, but in uh, uh, Lincoln, across from Lincoln Center, uh, mm -hmm. is full, beautiful IMAX. Okay. But I won't go see a movie that's just being projected in IMAX. I'll just go see the regular film in the theater. I don't need to go see that big, huge, humongous screen. You yeah. know, where the only well, good seat in the house is experience. where the only good seat in the house is in the back row. You know, <laughs> I, I don't like IMAX that much. I'm not Notice that crazy. That those theaters about it. don't have that deep a seating uh, usually. 
uh, you know. What do you mean that, they don't have that deep of seating? I, I, well, the ones that I've been to. Well, the one that I went road. to has a huge seating capacity, and it yeah. goes up. You know, it goes up. Oh. Okay. Quite a rake. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you it, uh, one time, I uh, the only ticket I could get was like in the front row. Forget mm -hmm. it. You do not want to watch an IMAX film from the front yeah, row. Like oh, excuse me. It was not only the front row, but it was on the side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, it was just I I went. This is this is ridiculous. I can't do this. You know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I I've never been that crazy about IMAX. I just uh, there've always been a lot a lot of large formats yeah. out there. And, uh, uh, you know, even back, you know, back in the, uh, you don't know about this, back in the uh, early days of film, before, uh, like in the 30s, there was a, there was a uh, process called Magnoscope, which know, was a 70 with... millimeter uh, projection. Oh. There was a great Western with John Wayne that was done in Magnoscope. Cimarron, I mm. think, was done in in, uh, I understand that the IMAX camera is extremely large. Oh yeah, they're uh, gi they're gigantic. They made smaller versions of it now, though. Yeah. You know, so that you have a little more flexibility. Like this, the Christopher Nolan, this whole film was done in IMAX. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jeff his, wanted to yes, ask a question. Jeff. Yeah, when I was uh, a teenager, I think it was maybe 20 years old or so. Mm -hmm. I worked for a place in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing is people were running around the city taking videos of people who were being interviewed with the sound and everything so that it would be ready at the six o'clock news. And it would probably start, they would bring it in at 30, uh, three times, three o'clock in the morning. And they would process all of that film. Well, in the old days, all the news was film. It's now it's That's no right. longer That's is, but it was, it was film. Done. And it was, and six, it was, it was done 16. completely in black. You couldn't see nothing. I know they had to, they had developing rooms, and they had uh, 16 millimeter film, and they they could do it right. pretty fast. If I guess they had you to. can't use a, a development a developing bag or anything. Uh, to uh, to develop the film even it's 16 just, millimeter you know, because you're doing a strip of film you know oh. you, got, yeah. you know but but they they had them at the TV stations they had these labs that just did it really fast you know they just ran it through the thing and it developed it you know hmm. but, uh, as far yeah. as the small stuff at home yourself I did I don't know maybe five or six of them and I said what do you mean eight millimeter hey. Really? 35 millimeter super eight yeah super eight. and i said the heck with that this is too complicated well, yeah I yeah well was... vi video changed everything okay you know uh, there isn't a tv station in the country it doesn't do video yeah it isn't you know, it's all digital now yeah and a lot of a lot of them are just using their iphones you know uh, actually to... to be honest with you you know i went out and i got this camera which is a um, was that that Sony? It's a Sony, yeah. It's a Sony, yeah. and it's uh, you know it's got interchangeable lenses on it and all of that. And uh, I take it out, and uh, it doesn't have the steady uh, ability, or nor the visual quality. Oh, you you can get a thing that you hang on to that I has know like I have it. I have it here. I haven't put it on. It's too, oh. I'd like things to be simple. I mean, I mean, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably going to get another camera soon, but I'm going to get more. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Anyway, um, you should get a red, huh? Yeah, get well, a red, right? Well, I should be able to afford one of those soon if I want to, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Um, the 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 uh, but what happens is is I find that the iPhone I go in and got like a. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, um, uh, a, 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 a gimbal. Gim not a gimbal. It's, it's just, uh, it's called, uh, what, what's a steady it? cam? It, no, no. Huh. It, it's just, a, you know, it's a it's a selfie stick, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you don't need a steady cam. You've got a steady cam built into the Apple iPhone that is as good as any steady cam in the business. Mm. Yeah. You know, and it is steadier than this. And I shoot a lot of stuff. I shoot uh, all the little shows that Marjorie and I do now using the selfie stick, and it's terrific. It's yes, just the best. Very nice. You know, 
and I say to myself, why did I buy this thing? <laughs> you know, I, it well, just isn't as good as an iPhone. Well, if, if, you're, if well, you're not going to be in the picture uh, and use a selfie stick and you want to do something where uh, you can really capture uh, movement and uh, dynamic range, there's nothing like that Sony camera. Uh, you know, it's uh, you can make a, a cinematic. I'm telling you now. Video. What do you mean? I can I do cinematic on the on the iPhone. There's a setting for it. There's yeah. a setting for it, Phil. I'm yeah. telling you, as somebody who's shot video all my life, I'm amazed by how good the iPhone is. Yeah. You know. But uh, how many here have shot any video on their iPhones? Right? It's pretty damn good, isn't it, huh? Very very good. Much better than Phil's video. Yeah. I don't shoot video. <laughs> I mean if there it, you go. the only thing it doesn't have is is a really good zoom ability. Yeah. Okay. You know, thing and you you can zoom with it, but it's just it's electronic zoom. It's not a physical zoom. Yeah. So, you know, but if I go on a vacation, I'm thinking of just getting myself a regular camera, you know, a video camera. Because I know how to shoot with those, you know, and I, and and right. uh, you have a zoom on them, and they're they're good. But anyway, it's it's. Do they use those three chip cameras anymore? Mm, God, like I don't. Camera. I haven't seen them. You don't need them. They're, everything's digital now, Phil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the kind of video you were shooting before, you needed like the lens. The lenses now are as. Uh, the lens, for instance, on an iPhone is as good as any lens I could buy on a video camera. Okay? Period. You don't need the three lenses. You know, so it's it's, it's amazing what we've done, you know. And yeah. all you people can now make movies and do video and put it on YouTube. By the way, as an experiment on YouTube, uh, you know, they, they, they do a lot of times they, they uh, demonetize me. Because Again? Uh, be, no, but they demonetize me occasionally. Who knows why? Sometimes we haven't had a single four-letter word on the entire program. Okay? And um, so, they, but they still demonetize me. And then I have to say, well, you, know, you shouldn't have demonetized me. That's wrong. And they went back and checked, and they go, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. You know, but I have to go Blame through the, the algorithm. I, yeah, I have to go through the trouble. Of war showing them our algorithm is full of crap. Okay, now uh, I'm tr don't say any four-letter words tonight because this is a test. Uh, I w today was mentioning to Marjorie we were driving down to the Apple Store because her iPad went dead, and um, I was m m telling her on the way down to this Apple Store. I said we were talking about limericks. And I said, well, I have the most disgusting limerick you've ever heard in your life. And I said it to her. And then I thought about it and I said, you know something? I could probably do that limerick on my show. And in spite of the fact that it's the filthiest limerick I know, they probably won't catch it. So I want to test that theory tonight. Okay, because they don't listen to the program and say, oh, he's about ready to do this, so let's go get him on that. I want to see if they actually catch it. So I'm going to tell you the limerick, and it is probably the most disgusting limerick I've ever heard in my life. Um, there was once was a woman from the Azores okay. whose snatch was all covered with sores. As she walked down the street, the dogs ate the green meat that hung in festoons from her drawers. Bill didn't get it. Why wouldn't I have gotten it? Uh, because it's too Is that not the most disgusting limerick you've ever heard? It's gross. No. It, it, huh? I didn't think so. But My it doesn't have exactly a single dirty say. word in it. Right. The only word that might be questionable is snatch, but I can say I snatch something and blah, 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 you know. Yeah, Let's blah, see blah, blah. now if after saying that limerick, if I get demonetized. So, you know, what uh, many of these uh, politicians like Robert Kennedy are talking about is being uh, 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 censored. And uh, they're, they're saying, he, he said that 
you know, he he was censored by Trump. He was censored by Biden. Uh, and uh, so, you know why he was censored? People, because everything he says is stupid. Well, you know, but isn't that what his opposition Look, is put? I out don't think as, I, as a defense to, to try to put him down. I think that the the uh, I think that the. Uh, the social media outfits have gotten so much heat for the stuff that goes out over social media that they're now in the process of censoring to save their own asses. Well, Trump rather than say, "Hey, you don't have we we're not going to censor any of this because this is like an open forum and sometimes people are going to say stuff that are absolute lies, but you know, so be it. I mean, how do you yeah. feel, Charlie? How do you feel about it? I mean, how do you feel about these things like YouTube, like Twitter, like uh, um, Facebook, censoring people for things that they say, especially that are political? Yeah. How do you feel I mean, about it? I don't it? like censorship of any form. Right. So. But, and you you don't want to see censored things that you disagree with necessarily or that you even feel are irresponsible. You know? Yeah, you I don't want to censor Kennedy. I just won't believe what he says. Exactly. Right. Even, even in, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago, the in uh, the Speaker's Square, in uh, in England, they, you know, they they had a place where if you wanted to say something, you could stand it's up. It's called Hyde Hyde Park. It. Hyde Park. Yeah. Hyde Hyde, Park. Yeah. If as long as the pigeons. Well, I, I we once described uh, uh, public access in New York as a, uh, you know, a electronic Hyde Park. Right. And and uh, I I think that's the way we should describe what goes on with the. All the things like YouTube and Facebook and so on and so forth and Twitter. No, it's now X. It's no more Twitter. No, more no, Twitter. no, it's still Twitter. Yeah. The logo for it is X. It's not the bird. Oh. Okay. It's still Twitter. Yeah. You know, because people will get too confused. You know. Yeah, it's it's interesting that uh, he uh, Musk has a uh, love affair with X. I guess his PayPal uh, uh, program was originally going to be called X, and yep. uh, you know X, X is a thing that he has a you know an affinity. SpaceX, yeah. SpaceX. Well, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Uh, but anyway, the point is, uh, it's it's not what we're talking about here. It's just a question of. Should they be in the business of censoring people? I mean, when they tell you, go on, do a show, talk to these people, you know, have fun. Oh, but by the way, don't say this, don't say that, don't say this, don't say oh. that. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then you don't even really give me a chance to protest it. What the Republicans are complaining about is they say that the FBI and the DOJ went to Twitter. They went to Facebook. No, they didn't. And they, they no, told they, them to not allow certain stories to hit no, the airwaves. No, what like, they what they did is they, it was worse than that. I think like Hunter Bickley legitimate. No, it, it really basically was a process of intimidation to these people. Going well, you know, we're not happy with this kind of thing going across and these kind of lies going across, and especially during COVID, they were especially sensitive to face mm -hmm. fake narratives. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they hit me on it, and it was because we were trying to to talk about those lies, you know. But I there's no way I can protest it, so I'll just you know live with it. But uh, you know, I mean. They just got so overly sensitive to everything, and then, of course, with the whole thing with uh, the Russians and them uh, going on all these websites and all these social media platforms oh, with, the bots. And with the bots and the things like that, and s putting across misinformation. I, well, I, let me I, let me finish, Phil. Yeah. Putting yeah. across the misinformation that that they just felt uh, they felt put upon that they people were starting to complain about this going on. And rather than, you know, I think they had every right to, for instance, post notices. This particular uh, tweet uh, is uh, it has not been vetted and perhaps could not be true. They could, I, you know, they have the right to do that. That's their company. 
but they yeah. got really paranoid about everything and they didn't want they didn't want they didn't want the government shutting them down or telling them what to do with their companies and so on so they they figured they'd be proactive and overly sensitive to stuff that was being put on their on their platforms well according to uh, some of these uh, whistleblowers that were at Twitter uh, they said that uh, Twitter and Facebook were being threatened that they were being threatened they were that their 230 status uh, that they're not responsible for the uh, the information that goes I out. I never heard of a 230. Was going, I never heard uh, of it. Section 230, I believe it's called. Well, I uh, never heard of it. I, all, well, all, all I ever heard of is the status that they, they the status that uh, uh, some companies got, and okay. it, it was the, the thing that probably should apply here, okay. uh, was what was called, I'm trying to remember what it was called, but it, it uh, common carrier status. In other words, for instance, a phone company could not be responsible for somebody who made a call that to somebody else and they talked about something illegal, okay? Because they're a common carrier and they had common carrier status. And the same thing was true with a lot of uh, like cable companies initially where had cable carrier, you know. Uh, for instance, uh, 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 what do you call it? We had uh, here in New York, we had, uh, um, you know, public access. And under that, they had common carrier status. If people said something that was irresponsible or illegal or whatever, the cable company would not be responsible for them saying it on their platform. Okay. Uh, and I never heard of this 230. Okay, but. section 230, according to Wikipedia, says no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as a publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. What does that so mean? So that means Facebook, for instance, isn't responsible for right, the right, uh, right, for, right. for what other content providers say. Well, they were talking about pulling that uh, uh, Section 230 uh, status from the social media companies if they didn't fall in line with the uh, with the edicts of the DOJ and uh, the FBI, and uh, so uh, this this is what we're finding out from how the can you pull how can you pull something that's already a law? Well, uh, it's it's a, well, this is what they said in well, in I, the think to, I think that would have to that would have to be done. I, I, I heard it in the congressional hearings today. You know, today uh, I, did they have a congressional hearing on this? It was today? yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and uh, anyway. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily believe what you're saying. Well, I'm telling you why. Look up what I'm, section I'm you two thirty is. You, you can. You're the guy I know that can hear something and then repeat it back to me, and you got it all wrong. Well, uh, it's like playing telephone. You know uh, what people are supposed to do is when you say something, you're supposed to repeat it back to that person so that they know that you got the story straight. You know, like yeah. scalp. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. How are you? I saw your video today that was up. It showed oh. up on my on my uh, YouTube. I don't know which one it was, but marching well, I was band. Say which one it was. I haven't put up one for a while. Yeah, they just uh, every now and then. I a Kevin Stopper will just come up. It could be <laughs> it could be th two years old. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, but don't worry. If they play any music that's dirty, you'll get demonetized. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's usually copyright. <laughs> oh, do you? That's have, usually what I get is copyright uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, and what happens? They yeah. let they let it run anyway, but you just can't make money off of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Are are happens. you monetized, Kevin? No. Oh, so it doesn't really matter. What I don't no. understand: there's this girl on uh, this uh, Ukrainian girl, young child, started as a <laughs> child. She's about fourteen, fifteen now. And she plays the violin out on the street, and she gets like 11 million views. Hmm. Okay, start adding that up. By the way, she makes about two million dollars a year. Okay, but my question is, she plays songs that are in copyright. So how does yeah. she get around that? Maybe she pays the royalties. Maybe she pays for it. If she makes so much money, she probably pays for probably it. Probably pays for the royalties, and then has to tell, uh, um, you know. Um, YouTube, YouTube that she's paid for. That, that I'm here. Look, I paid for the royalty. Because know. all those songs that you know we do in the band, mm -hmm. um, and all those performances that we do, he, you know, the band director pays for. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, he pays the copyright. Oh, so it, so it, but, but so he when we when we set up a show for that for that year, mm -hmm. you know, us as boosters, we pay for the you know the okay, the but that does that, but that doesn't cover the copyright for no, playing no, it on I'm, YouTube, right? Correct. You, that's a separate. You'd have to go out and get a separate. I copyright would have to go out and get a separate one, yeah, for the video, right? Yeah, right. So you know, it used to be nobody ever cared. You know, I right. used to use any music I wanted. That in was my before videos. the Flo and Eddie deal. No, the Flo and Eddie deal was completely different. Well, no, deal. then music before a certain date uh, no, no, was no, 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 able to no, be no, used. Flo and Eddie. That it, the fact is that if something is in copyright, something is in copyright. What app? Uh, what uh, Sirius XM was saying was that before a certain date, the music wasn't in copyright. They could use it. And the fact was they couldn't. Okay, so that was that's that old that. twenty-five year rule. Yeah, the old whole twenty-five mm -hmm. year rule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, uh, that uh, you know, that, for the most part, that's not that they, they didn't set any major precedent. Didn't they, didn't the Beatles or somebody whack that thing or something? Well, they, you, it used to be copyright was thirteen years plus thirteen years. In other words, yeah, you so could the 26th you, year, you yeah. got it for yeah. you got it for 13 years, and then it could be renewed for another 13, and then it went into what was called public domain, and the real expert on public domain was my friend Shecky, because he knew of movies that were in public domain and movies that weren't in public domain. In fact, a good example. I'll give you a good example of public domain. The first 19 episodes of Star Trek are public domain. I know you find that hard to believe, but somehow Paramount didn't think to go out and copyright them. There's also 39 episodes of Sea Hunt. Well, that's, let's take one thing at a time, <laughs> Phil. Well, I love Sea uh, Hunt. Yes, you're so smart, Phil. Okay. Uh, anyway, the point is I'm, I'm giving an example. Yeah. But what turned out was finally uh, Paramount <clears throat> said, yes, the show wasn't copywritten, but the music was. So if you want to run Star Trek, you have to run it without the music, Silent. and nobody wanted to do that. But I knew a guy for a while who was selling uh, copies of Star Trek, the first 19 episodes. Paramount wrote him a letter, said cease and desist, and he said, I won't. Show me that this is in copyright. And that was the last he heard from them. Okay, so I mean, there was a and lot of wasn't, things. Hmm? What wasn't there a rule as well that you could still play segments like only a five or eight second segment of anything, but it well, would you only can be still you can still do it. There's a thing called fair yeah. fair, use. fair use. Now some yeah. people said, oh, well, it's fair use. I'm running it because I think I should run it. No, fair use is when you use it to give an example of something. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I want to say, you know, in the old days in movies they used to do such and such, and then I would show you a clip that exemplified that. That would be considered fair usage. But if I showed the whole movie to prove that point, no, that wasn't fair usage. Mm -hmm. You know. And was there a specified amount of time? Because I know I've heard people say, you know, on, on whatever a radio show or whatever, say, you know, I can play this much, and then they got to cut it off. And they'll cut it off right at the right time. Or, you know. They'll play five or six seconds, and they said, "No, I can't go any further than that." You know, that um, I don't remember something like that, but I don't remember what the deal was. Well, I, I there, want it, to say it, it was five or ten seconds, somewhere in between there, it, five it, to eight it, seconds. Well, fair, it's it comes under the fair usage, but I don't know that it's any amount of time. I think if you okay. if you used over a minute or something, you'd be violating it. Yeah, yeah, you know. But I um, thought there was a specific. Five to eight I mean, seconds. too bad Shecky isn't still alive. I'd call him tonight and ask right. him, you know, oh, how that works. But he, because he was the expert in it. I mean, all the footage he ran on, on Letterman was public domain footage. Had no copyright. Yeah. It was so old, yeah. and the people never renewed the copyright. And uh, so... And then uh, he collected that stuff, right? Oh, he yeah. yeah. stored it away and used it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a, that was the footage that he used on on yeah. the Letterman show. Because he knew he wouldn't get no crap for it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, well, actually, it was he actually it was footage he got from a company. 
okay, that they paid the company for the for the use of the footage because they it's not that they own the footage, but they supplied the footage. And fortunately, the company was also a company that Shecky owned. Yeah, neither way. Wasn't, <laughs> yeah, wasn't protected. So, so he he made a lot of money off the Letterman show for his company by yeah. simply going and getting you know the, the film. I film. like that cat and monkey video. Oh, yeah, well that that's one of his famous ones. Yeah, that's yeah. the most famous. That's the one they. You're the monkey, right, Phil? Uh, no, the, uh, stop eating those bananas. It's a cat washing a monkey. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. He did it on Letterman. Yeah. You know, yeah. you said. Oh no! Wait, it's a monkey hard. washing a cat. Excuse me. Yeah. It's the other yeah. way around. Yeah. It seems yeah. like it. Oh. Right on Letterman. Yeah. Uh, you but. said Phil was smart. You got to you got to add the except for news, politics, economics, and cars. Uh, yeah, yeah. He pays way too much for cars, right? Actually, yeah. uh, no, he I didn't pay that much for it. Uh, no, he didn't pay that much. You for said it. you paid Probably. ten grand for that junker. Yeah, but it's but it's uh, listed for about twenty seven in its in its current condition. Hey, <laughs> you know the um, uh, I've been watching this uh, Jay Leno garage uh, Jay Leno's garage uh, videos mm, canceled. I love those things canceled. Uh, well, it's on YouTube. Yeah, but uh, it, it, yeah, no, he. That's one thing he does that did, that I I think was kind of good because he was really it was good excellent. at it. Yes, yeah. uh, yes, uh, uh, Tony. If you, Alex, the uh, Phil as, told, as Tony attempts to get a word in edgewise, Phil. Yeah, no, yes, has Alex has Phil told me that he paid ten grand, but he's going to burn the car up, have somebody burn it up, and collect on the insurance. Mm. I'm yeah. joking, yeah. Phil. Well, that's what that's what that's what that's what Trump was planning on to doing for America in order to break even. He was going to burn the country down and get the insurance money. It's too much, too much yes. metal to burn that thing. Yeah, yeah, palladium steel. Yeah. Uh, where is? I wonder where Brian is tonight. He's not in his normal. He's got to be at work. He's stuck in Lodi. In Lodi. Yeah. Right now, you're fired. You're fired. Yeah, yeah. He showed us that he's on his cell phone. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, uh, Ke Kevin, did you shoot any video lately of your kids with their orchestras and their bands? No, I'm pretty much uh, out of it. I just kind of we're kind of doing transition right now. Now you shot uh, those wife. all with an iPhone, right? Oh well, yeah, yeah. My iPad, iPad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I iPhone looks great. You know, look your. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to get recruited or voluntold to do it again next year but you know i don't mind it but your kids aren't even in that school anymore right no she's off to uh but you're University stuck in oregon it. well now l let's see brian i'd say he's in lodi tonight hello hello are you in lodi yes <laughs> yeah what are you stuck at work overnight? <laughs> so sanitary yeah we're we're doing some big improvements so um yeah, so it's a long night because we're we're training night shift. So yeah. What do you mean doing you're making nice kaizans? Work. Yeah, we're doing some kaizan work. Are they doing them overnight? Yeah, because you know we made the changes and then we have three shifts. So I, I like being here for the night shift to do training, so they understand it's coming for me and they understand the importance of it and stuff like that. So yeah, it's the good leader in me. Oh, good. Kaizans put you to sleep, and then overnight you made it even worse. What, what do you, what do you, what do you, what's the term you use there? Kaizan in, means continuous improvement. Kai means improvement, and then, yeah. And Zan means sigma, six continuous. Six I don't. Icon or is Izan? Kaizan. It's almost like Kaiser, but Kaizan. Is that yeah. out of that ISO standards? <laughs> no. you know, like ISO 9000? No. no. Oh, no. For, Phil's trying to show us how smart he is again. Oh, well, I, a, I, didn't, no. I never knew what Kaizen was. He, he, always will, he will always take the, the discussion and, and right. run it down into a gaping ditch well, uh, to show that he knows something. You know, it, it costs hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the ISO reports that are the most uh, current. So what I used to do is I would read the ones that were maybe seven. Do you eight think years there's old. anybody listening to us that cares, including Brian, that I could get for free? And, Nobody cares. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. And they're old. Huh? 
Well, yeah, but they were still the standards uh, that that were good enough to run corporations. Keep going, Phil. We're down to 32 people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> an improvement for you. How about if you just block his voice, Alex? Oh, uh, you know, that's okay. What what was the one? Nope. We had Nobody technical difficulties listening. about a week ago. And, yeah, and the numbers yeah. went up into the hundreds. I mean, hundred, yeah, it was like yeah. hundred twelve or something. People love to see me fail, you know. Why don't you just do a show like on Tuesday nights, just by yourself, pretending that there's all these issues? Yeah, all these issues, right? He doesn't have to pretend. <laughs> First yeah. one will be, I can't hear Phil. What do we do? Oh, that's 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 not an issue. <laughs> uh, well, I could mute Phil if I wanted to, you know. Yeah. I'm available Tuesdays. It's Wednesdays. That are <laughs> you're available. See, when I, when I'm just I, glad you're not available on Mondays. Okay. <laughs> I wish you would call the Monday show one time when I'm cooking. <laughs> huh? I wish I cook and listen to the show sometimes. D I don't ever call the Monday me. show because uh, Marjorie, yes, Marjorie, Marjorie has 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 warned me, Tony, that if you call the Monday show, she will hang up. <laughs> You were in hot water the other day, Alex, with the movie talk. You, you don't like any of the movies. I mean, the Captain America was a great movie. I was like, but she did like it. I was like, that was a great movie. Captain America? The first one, remember? No, we were talking about the Captain of Tomorrow, the World of Tomorrow, Captain oh, whatever Captain in the World of Tomorrow. I can't remember was wasn't Captain America. Oh, it was the Winter Star, and I got it wrong. I, I like that movie. I was like, I'm surprised you didn't like that. I didn't say I didn't like it, and she I, she saw it and, and liked it, but she probably doesn't remember seeing it. You know? Yeah, I remember you were all and I was like, oh, they're fighting. He's getting in hot water. I was like, all right. Yeah. But I, anyway. So, anyways. Um, um, let me see here. What, is there anything happening in the news that we should yeah, be talking about? Yeah, Hunter's deal is... Uh, <laughs> He pleaded uh, guilty to not paying taxes. No, Paul. He's not. Paul can uh, not Paul. I, uh, Alan can elaborate on this one. He sent me a uh, a post about Hunter and the uh, his his deal getting revoked. No, well, because the judge wouldn't accept the uh, the decision. The plea that bargain. The, the, the plea bargain, and not plea it's, bargain, it's Phil. probably not her place to do that exactly. But she decided to, and she's a Trump appointee, by the way. Let's add that. Uh, they asked uh, if this was a, a, a normal thing, and both the defense and the uh, prosecutor said, no, this is not normal, and it's never been done before. And so they, they revoked it. What do you mean? Plea deals are made all the time. No, but th for this particular kind of thing. What do you mean? It's a tax. Tax. You didn't pay taxes. Yeah, well, neither did uh, Fiona Helmsley, and look what they did to her. Well, and, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, Martha Stewart. Hey, uh, what if, did they do to her? It, 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 plea dealing is when the government wants to make a deal with you, so they don't have to go through the whole process of holding a court hearing and and the expense of that for the taxpayer. And so, if they made this settlement with him, which you know he to begin with, he paid back all the money, the taxes. And he uh, he pled he was going to plead guilty to the charge, and I don't see there's anything. I don't think the public is being served by sending Hunter Biden to jail, especially because I you know in many ways I think he's a poor soul who has lived a life of uh, of a lot of misery with his mother dying and his. Son, the sister that family dying. is so dysfunctional. And, and their dog bites all the yeah, secrets. Yeah, the dog's the again now. Really. Third bite now. He's kind of like. Well, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about. Yeah, that's, uh, really, that really Mitch makes the McConnell. case of what we're talking about. Hey, hey, Commander? Mitch McConnell. Uh, the whole family's dysfunctional. <laughs> this is the second dog that bites. Why? It's usually the owner of the dog that's re that, that is the reason. Dog reacts that God, way. Please help me, God. Please yeah. make it so that Phil will shut up for the rest of the show. How about, have we, did, did everybody hear about Mitch McConnell fell the other day and today, mid sentence, he stumbled? He just, he, no, he didn't just stumble. He just phased out completely right. and then yeah. was just standing there kind of like this. Yeah, he looked lost. He was pretending he was Biden. 
Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Phil, will you stop it with Biden already? Oh, you know, to begin with, you're, you making, you're, 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 making, with you're making fun of Biden <laughs> because of certain things that happen when you get older, and I think you're being an ageist when you do it. Yeah, you never tell Alan uh, to stop it when it comes to Trump. How come, you know, when it comes to Biden, you beat me up? You know? No, I'm talking about what you're being their use. If you beat him up about his politics and you don't agree what he did here or what he did there, fine. But when you're going after him because the guy, to begin with, has a speech impediment and because he, he's getting older and he's not as spry as he once was, he's certainly spry enough to make sure that the... Uh, uh, that the, uh, you know, the, what do you call it, the increasing costs in this country have gone down and that they're, uh, Yeah, you know. because he printed so much money. Yeah. Uh, Phil, the, Phil, the increase, Phil, Phil, you know, just shut up for one minute, okay? Just shut you up. Know, you used to make about 400 Gs a year. And, okay. and in those years, 400 Gs was worth, what, a million? That's a lot. Maybe. 400 Maybe. Gs was worth 400 Gs back then. Yeah, yeah it, it was. Worth, it was worth 400 Gs back then. You're right. But now, today, your 400 Gs would be worth 82 cents because of inflation. And, you know, so... Here we Phil, are again Phil, with economics. Here we no, go. Phil, 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 just please, <laughs> please, let other people join in on the conversation. Well, they can. When Except you let them, them you know. But anyway, um, uh, all I'm saying is, is that... Uh, 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 you know, I mean, I kind of feel a little sorry for Hunter Biden only because he, you know, he, the family had a lot of tragedy, a lot of tragedy. And, you know, I mentioned I mentioned the, the his wife and children dying in a car crash. And then, of course, Phil talks about the dog biting. You know, I mean, well, you know, you Biden. Know, and, but he, uh, no, I, uh, one thing does not lead into the okay, other. If, if you were to ask me, what's one thing that Biden has done? Uh, mm-hmm. He brought down the price of fentanyl in this country. So you know, they were all on that too. Stop How watching. Many people have died from fentanyl poisoning because he have his porous borders. You know, letting the cartels bring this stuff across. Everybody smoke it. Well, what did Trump do? And what did Trump do? He built Trump, a model Trump wall did a great job on the border. Bell. He did Trump a great, he did bell, a great job on the border. All those people That's were pouring funny, over. Bill, he I'm built joking. the fence. The he fell, built the fence. Phil. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Alan's going to pay for it. Phil, do you realize how annoying you are right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey, uh, you know, um, Tony wanted to talk about global warming. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, let me bring this up, okay? Let's see. I'm yeah. sure yeah. Phil will have a comment on this, too. Uh, today, uh, Kevin Spacey was found yeah, not guilty of all charges in England, yes. and that's the last of the things that he's been charged with. In okay. England? No, here in the United States, he had one thing with this actor, Rap. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. thrown mm-hmm. out. And then yeah. there was one in Connecticut that was thrown out. There are no more charges against Kevin Spacey now. So, so is co- career coming back? Well, that's I'm I'm going to ask. Are they going to start? Are they going to start hiring him because he's not guilty of anything? What didn't you said he'd be in a What do you think is going to happen, Charlie? Got any? I saw him at Ice Cream Comet. He was good. Charlie. Well, I was going to ask you what you thought. Do you think Kevin Spacey is suddenly going to be able to work? He should be able to, but probably not. He should be able to, absolutely. Absolutely. There are no charges against him. He has been found not guilty in every well, single he case. He was found guilty by the media. Well, thank you, Phil. Yes, uh, uh, yes, I, I uh, uh, Alan. Yeah, yes, Alan. No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say that Phil interrupted everybody tonight. Fuck you! Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there goes your. Uh, there he goes your. Uh, there goes the nice money. Uh, <laughs> if Alex can't Can push bleep the button, that, I'm gonna try. Can you bleep it. <laughs> yeah. That was good, Phil. Yeah. You called late, Brian, and I don't blame you. I mean, well, if uh, I wouldn't uh, know Phil was on tomorrow, he just wanted to make sure I was here. 
No, usually I, I listened to the show before, but I went upstairs to this office and I found out Phil was on when I turned on. Is that your office at the, at work? Like, no, no. This is another office. It's like a funny farm office, all white. It's like yeah, a, it's, it's like a little temp temporary office or whatever. Noise. Your corporate doesn't spend a lot on artwork, does it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, how many, how many, how many offices do you have in that building? Me personally? No, I mean, no. How many? The company. I mean, in how, this, how, in this one, there's like ten or twelve offices. Oh, really? It's not that big a building then. This is a focus room. Oh, what do you mean? How many they focus work? room, so I can focus. Oh, so you can <laughs> focus. Oh, okay, good. Well, we were talking about photography earlier. <laughs> But nobody else wanted to chime in with that either. Boy, I'm going to be exhausted after this show. I'm a little more rearing to go to watch a movie. Later. Well, you need the exercise. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling tomorrow. I thought Phil was, oh. I thought, I thought Phil was on tomorrow night. He muscled in tonight. Hey. I was, yeah. I, so, Tony, what about what have you been telling me about global warming? I got in trouble with my brother's girlfriend and him with global warming. You know, Alex, I was going to tell you this. I know it's at the end. You can think about it, guys. I was watching the local news, and they had top 10 hottest Julys for New York because it's so hot, right? So 19, I was like in the 40s, beat this month. So I turned to my brother and his girlfriend. I said, how are we still alive? It was hotter in 1940 than it's here. What about global warming? She goes, your brother's being a wise ass. Because she, Alex, how is that possible? It was hotter in 1940. And they weren't screaming global warming. How did we not like disintegrate? It's still be here. I don't think it was hotter. In, 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 in this month, in New York, has been hotter than any month in the history of yep. taking. So you're, uh, you you're know, saying, and, and the same thing is, uh, but, but worldwide, we had the hottest. Uh, this has been the hottest year in the history of the world. Okay, yeah. and, so and they, they say one of the problems is. Not just the heat during the day, but the heat at night. So because it's not cooling down, that's another stat that they're taking. And they're saying it's getting so warm that the pilots are having a hard time. They're going to start reducing mm -hmm. people sitting on the, the, on the airplanes because and, uh, the and air the, is so the, warm. the water in Miami is 110 degrees. And Europe is burning now instead of California. Yeah. Uh, and no, and when, you, when you say... When Greece. you say... When you, we know that film. Uh, 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 the thing is that we don't pay much attention to is that this is a sign that something is wrong, okay? Because it's not cyclical if this is the worst it's ever been, you know? Well, Tony uh, says it's not the worst it's no, ever been. No, well, Tony's wrong. I gotta look it up. Tony's again. never wrong. <laughs> well, I'm not right all the time, but you know, they were, they were I mean, Tony doesn't want to be wrong, but he is, so. <laughs> Anyway, I'm playing the theme right now. So I'll play you know, tomorrow. Know that. And I, I'm exhausted, folks. Um, mm -hmm. Only that, listed a trunk comic today for $350. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Phil, can I bring this show to a close, please? Or, or do you mind? Do you it mind? It closed an hour ago. The, <laughs> no, the minute you came on, it went away. In fact, Are you we're, on drugs, Phil? we're now down to 29 yeah. people, Phil. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jeff, thank you. I appreciate you for being here tonight. Charlie, always great to have you here. Uh, again, tell them what it says on your on your shirt. Be greater than average. Okay. That and uh, of, co average. of course, Phil, thank you. And uh, Alan, thank you very much for having joined us tonight. Tony, good having you here. Uh, yeah, and Brian, uh, Brian. Brian, thank you for being here. And Kevin, of course, always good having you here as well. Uh, everybody, uh, just do a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And then fade to my camera. There we go. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. A new one will be forming uh, right after this on the uh, Jack Bishop uh, intersection. Uh, he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.